Tonight, five investigates finds county jails in Minnesota making millions while immigrants accuse sheriffs and federal agents of unlawfully detaining them for months and years. The longer they wait to be deported or released, the more money those counties make. Investigative reporter Eric Rasmussen and our team spent months digging through court records that reveal an immigration system plagued by delays and confusion, Eric. Jackie Paul, no matter what side you take in the debate, the deportation business in Minnesota is booming. Six county jails in the state are bringing in millions from the feds at a rate of up to $100 a day per person to hold immigrants facing deportation. But we found many don't get deported right away or at all. And while they wait months or even years, the meter keeps running. The massive Sherburne County Jail near Elk River is not just a local lockup. They told you when to, when to lock down, when to shower, when to eat, and you don't commit no crime. From the day federal agents booked 40-year-old Abdul Qadir Abdi, he was a moneymaker for the county. His bed, one of 300 reserved and paid for by Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE. When I talked to one officer, I said, the jail is getting bigger. He said, because of you guys. Once a teenage refugee of civil war in Somalia and now a reformed gang member, Abdi has stayed out of trouble for more than a decade. But ICE agents suddenly detained him during a routine immigration check-in at the federal building in Bloomington last year. You under arrest. You have a warrant for detention. And we will deport you in two weeks. But that didn't happen. Instead, Abdi would spend the next 13 months locked up, most of it here in Sherburne County. At $95 a day, Abdi's detention alone generated thousands of dollars. Since 2015, five investigates found ICE payments to the county shot up from $2.9 million to $10.5 million last year. There was a big push to start detaining everyone. Former federal immigration judge Susan Castro retired in 2017. She says courts are struggling to keep up with rising detentions along the border and in Minnesota, creating an overburdened system unlike anything she's seen since taking the bench more than two decades ago. Our caseload per judge averaged between 300 and 500 cases. When I retired, my pending caseload was over 3,000. And as those cases flooded county jails, a memo to the court in March from U.S. Attorney Erica McDonald noted the number of immigrants challenging their detention in Minnesota had also increased dramatically. In a statement, McDonald's office told us most of the cases are brought by individuals with serious criminal convictions whose detention is mandated under federal law. But we reviewed all 160 of those federal challenges in Minnesota since 2017, and our database shows 40, or about one out of four immigrants, only had misdemeanor, nonviolent offenses or had not been charged with a crime at all. Lawyers for one man from Somalia wrote he has no criminal record other than traffic and parking violations. The tab for his detention, at least $17,000. When a judge ruled that a Cambodian immigrant has been detained far too long already, ICE had paid Sherburne County $32,000 to hold him for nearly a year. Time is money and time is so valuable and it's just being squandered. And our review found county jails profiting off of a deportation process often hamstrung by miscommunication, delays, and inefficiency. We even found immigrants with felony convictions who weren't deported right away either. Almost two years after ICE agents detained a man from Ghana who'd been convicted of fraud, a judge criticized ICE for inexplicably transferring that detainee to Louisiana, Arizona, back to Minnesota, Louisiana again, and later Alabama, even though ICE was unable to obtain a travel document to deport him. I think there's a lot of money wasted on moving people around for reasons you can't always understand. Those delays, all part of the federal immigration system that poured $14.8 million into the coffers of five Minnesota counties last year alone. They know this is a moneymaker. Why else would they want to make more bed space? Obviously, we're not going to provide a service for the federal government that negatively impacts our taxpayers. Sherburne County Board Chairman Tim Dolan recently supported a proposal that would have added 200 more beds for immigrant detainees at the jail. Sheriff Joel Brott declined our request for an interview, so we sat down with Dolan. That's how it's been for 20 plus years. And State Rep Nick Zerwas. Well, I don't think it's about money at all. Both supporters of the ICE contract. It is a critical and important role 
in our federal defense, in our federal public safety. Can you argue that this isn't just a huge financial boon for a county like Sherburn? I think there's incentives in place, whether they take inmates from uh, Anoka County or Hennepin uh, County, or if they take uh, federal inmates. But the invoices show Sherburn County gets $95 a day per person from ICE, compared to just 60 from Anoka. Dolan acknowledges that federal revenue is important and even helped pay for this new government center. Despite regular protests, Dolan supports keeping Sherburn County's contract with ICE, even if it means some of that federal money pays to hold immigrants with misdemeanors or others never charged with a crime for months or years. Why would the county want to be involved in locking up those sorts of people? Again, our role is, is spelled out by our contract. There's a reason there's habeas hearings, and when those people are released, that's a testament to the fact that it works. Should it have ever gotten to that point when somebody's been held for six months or 10 months or 16 months? In a perfect world, no. Now, Abdul Qadir Abdi has not been deported, reunited with his wife. He was released in February, actually, after a judge ruled his continued detention without a bond hearing would violate his constitutional rights. Now, Jackie, he says he recently got a work permit to work here in the U.S., but he's still fighting to stay here. Eric, is there any word from ICE on his case or your investigation? Of course we ask. ICE declined our request for comment, saying it just won't comment on any ongoing litigation. But I can tell you, we spent months creating that database of immigration cases here in Minnesota where people were challenging their detention. And you can see a lot more of what we found over on KSTP.com. Well, check it out. Okay, Eric Rasmussen, thank you.